Dude, this city is sick. <laughs> Screw five points for Ravenclaw. It's five points for Warsaw, okay? <laughs> Warsaw's freaking making it right now. Okay, what? This is Warsaw? Yeah, <laughs> Shaboy. Oh. Roulette. Okay, Pauline, I'll see you. Got ourselves a Polish sausage. It's a vibe, dude. It's a vibe. Warsaw, you're surprising me, 100%. <laughs> we on the Luxury Express, it's not the Orient Express, it's the Lux Express heading towards Warsaw. It's our third Lux. Yeah man, they got mo you got a whole movie theater options, you know what I mean? You got tons of movies, comfortable seats, Wi-Fi, AC. Our journey from the Baltic Sea to the Mediterranean continues. And although this map shows us going directly from Vilnius to Krakow, we instead decided to make a last minute detour in Warsaw first before continuing onward. Well, damn, it's popping here, huh, Nathan? Busy, a lot of tour groups. A little bit more than the past few cities, I feel like. I'm kind of surprised that out of all the places we've been to so far, that Warsaw has the most tourists. Coming in last night, I couldn't believe that Warsaw looked like this because every picture of Warsaw I had in my mind was like gray, gloomy, somber, just muted. I didn't imagine it being so vibrant with colors. Their old town is like clean, pristine. Like even the, the new town that we drove by had all these like malls and young people out and some of their buildings too. They had these almost like skyscraper type buildings just looked really cool so i can't wait to see more of the city this is like literally our first few hours here but so far i'm just like how have i not heard more about this place we almost skipped poland and shame on us for that as naive foreigners it's easy to see poland from a skewed lens and just dwell on the communist era or just focus on the world war ii atrocities but there is so much innovation and growth and beauty in poland right now that we had completely overlooked Warsaw, officially the nation's capital and largest city, lies in the heart of East Central Poland in Central Europe. And when I say that this place was bombed during World War II, I mean this place was totally leveled to the ground. And looking at the city now, you just wouldn't know it. Seriously, this city has truly risen from the ashes like a baby phoenix. Uh. In the past 30 years, Poland has been going through a drastic transformation, growing more than any other economy in Europe. A recent article came out saying that Poland is projected to overtake the United Kingdom in wealth by 2030. In Poland, we ask not, we do. Why problem make? When you no problem have, you don't want to make. Being situated in the middle of Europe's geopolitical frenzy, with Russia now in Ukraine to the right, Germany to the left, Poland has been investing very heavily in military defense and gaining serious military muscle. I'm talking tanks, jet fighters, Apache helicopters, and has doubled its military forces to over 300,000 personnel. Defense is a big sector and all these things cost. So we wondered, how is Poland able to finance all this while so much of Europe is going through a recession and struggling financially? For one, Poland's tech sector is booming and with a highly skilled workforce receiving widespread investment from multinational companies like Google, Meta, Intel, and Amazon, you might have heard of them. So there's been a huge influx of capital. Much of the world has been sleeping on Poland's growth, but more on that later. First, pierogies. <laughs> you walk so funny, baby. Remember that pierogi, dude, pierogi. <laughs> I'm pronouncing it all wrong. <laughs> Is it pierogi? Pierogi? Yeah, there you go. That sounds good. Pierogi. <laughs> but I'm going to pierogi. All right. This is what we came for. Pierogi on pierogi, dude. And then look at this. The Chinese got their dumplings. The Italians got their ravioli. But the Polish got their pierogi. That's right. Dude, I didn't expect them to be crispy. I'm, I'm like down, dude. I'm super down. stoked about that. Listen to this crunch. And on top of this is a little bit of bacon. We're doing a little bit of um, pierogi roulette because we ordered like 
four different types. A champignon and onion. We got a meat. <laughs> Would you say that French too? <laughs> champignon. Hey, I tried to say it the right way. We got a meat, we got a cheese and a white cheese and onion. No, white cheese and potato. And potato. So oh that one already, that's, the, that's mushroom for yeah, sure. Yeah, so this one's a champignon. Okay, let's try it. It's probably hot. <laughs> oh my god. No, oh my god. Holy shit. This is better than any dumpling or ravioli I've ever had in my life. I swear to God. I'm not saying that for the clout. This place, this place has like phenomenal reviews. Got ourselves a Polish sausage on top of some sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things in the world, I love sauerkraut, that acid with a fatty meat. Oh my God. Dude, it looks amazing. You it's hear like that? The outside perfect. skin? That's what you want. You want that snap. Wow. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we back, round two. Pierogi's round two. Boiled is like the more traditional way, although a lot of the locals prefer it fried, because obviously anything fried is typically better. You got like texture, crush, you know, kind of crispy on the outside. Yeah. Little side of sour cream to complement that. Instead of the bacon. Instead of the bacon. Yeah, this is a little bit, this is like the healthier version, basically. Yeah, sorry, I'm so excited. We've got <laughs> soup that's like a sour rice soup served in bread with like white sausage, egg, all kinds of goodness. This is an old Polish hunter style pork stew. It looks like a little hut, okay? It looks like a little <laughs> house with a chimney. It's so cute. And if you open it up, look at that. I don't even know. I heard there's plums in it. Looks like there's like a sauerkraut in it. It's obviously got some pork in it, but. Please dig in. It smells amazing. Oh my God, can I just dig in? Can we both dig in? Let's do just, it, let's there's do no it. rules, right? Oh my god. This, they're both really good. I love how sour this one is. It really does taste like sauerkraut. And this one's got the sweetness from like that fruit. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and after a hearty meal like that, and dare I say, pierogi heaven, you know we need a nap. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Brooklyn Bedding. Traveling full time means we don't always have a say in the quality of the mattresses we sleep on. They rank from bad, decent, good, to pretty awful. There's no gift in this mattress. But if we had the option, or could teleport to our mattress back home, we'd choose a Brooklyn bedding mattress all day long. Our personal choice of bed to rule them all. My precious. Precious. Brooklyn bedding offers a wide selection of sizes and firmness levels to best suit you. And they own their own factory in the US, which allows them to offer super high quality mattresses without the luxury price tag. They offer a 120 night sleep trial, free shipping, and a 10 year warranty. So if you wanna upgrade your mattress just like we did, head on over to brooklynbedding.com slash travel and use our code travel to get 25% off. Oh. This popping. <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of Espanol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? A lot of the Spanish Spanish are looking. taking over Warsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Good energy though, I'll say. Like, and all these, the facades of all the old town are really well intact. Yeah, well yeah. maintained, or I don't know. They usually touch them up every few years, but this is one of the nicest ones I've Is been that to. what they do? They touch them up they every few years? They touch them up, you know, just a little bit, dab, dab here and there, patch up the holes. <laughs> and they have the butt cheeks right in the center of the square right there. That's Nathan. what you want. That's what brings it all together. The cohesiveness of the square is the butt cheeks. All right, we're now walking down Novi Sviat. Sviat? Novi Sviat. Novi Sviat. Novi Sviat. Not Novi Sviat, which I thought it was. Hey, it's hard when you're moving every week and you're trying to learn a different oh, language sure, and like sure. know what the right things are to say. Lohi uh, kaito. Thank you. Thank you. Teshikule. Oh, teshikule. 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 Oh. oh. <laughs> you turn, turn, turn it tied. Turn it a bit in the main. So I feel like this street, like based on what I've read online, is kind of like the Champs Elysees type of Warsaw. There's like a lot of restaurants, a lot of cafes, a lot of shopping. It's busy. It's people are out and about. It's popular. And yeah, it's also very charming, just like different colors of the buildings, different architecture. But uh, we're gonna grab another cup of coffee because we gotta make up for that one we had this morning. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, well that was the most watered down, milky flat white I've ever had in my life. I'm taking no prisoners, I'm going <laughs> only 4.5 stars and up. Look at the photos, like that's not for me. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit of coffee snob. That's not a good cappuccino or flat white. It's really nice. Oh, if you 
just want a good flat white. I'm telling you. Like look, and they can do the designs. And just like not too much milk. Like it's a proper flat white. They do it really good here. Usually I'm not one for flat whites. I like them voluptuous whites. And curvilicious whites. Nathan, you're psychotic. The food bag. You brought the peanut butter? Yeah, I did. You did one bite. Nathan. Always got priority, you know what I'm saying? We gotta keep a olive oil and balsamic and eggs and all the other weird shit we do. Alright, first flex. Another day, another bus. Dude, this is nice. What's going on with Poland? couple days here in Krakow. <laughs> a lot of the locals here, they told us that if we have limited time in Poland, which we do, we're here for just over a week, they recommended that we actually spend more time in Krakow over Warsaw and or if we can make it to Gdansk. We're not gonna be able to make it to Gdansk. I hope I'm saying that right. LOL, I'm gonna look back at this and be like, what the f But so far, Krakow has a totally different vibe from Warsaw. Another old town, here we come. Well, we found the Big Ben of Poland. <laughs> it looks like that, totally. <laughs> Outdoor seating once again, lots of greenery, cocktails, ice cream, hamburgers, yeah. it's a vibe. Summer is, summer is here for sure. Yes. And again, I just feel like the people who live in places that it gets like really freaking cold, like minus 20 Celsius in the winter, we've yeah, been they, told. They appreciate They appreciate this, yeah. summer. And they actually, yeah, they want to rent a bike. They want to get on their scooter. They want to go for walks. And I swear to God, ice this cream. Guy, look at this guy right here. Yeah, okay, he is cold. He is cold. Okay, dude. He's smacking. <laughs> this is the life. My hands don't fit. You must have quit. So, <laughs> got their little version of Hollywood over here. Oh my god. Two experiences we included in our time here in Krakow were visiting the Auschwitz concentration camps and the Veliks assault mine. We found an all-day tour that took us to both sites. As heavy as it is, I recommend that every person visit Auschwitz. It's an invaluable part of history that is a reminder of what mankind is capable of in the worst sense. One of the first quotes you see is George Santayana saying, those who don't remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The tour guides provide enormous insight into the atrocities that happened here. And it's definitely eerie to be standing on the actual sites of where it all happened. Now, the salt mine was one of the coolest things we've ever done. We were taken 442 feet underground and on a 2.2 mile route that only showed us 2% of the actual mine. Here you can see the smaller shaft. Uh, this one connects the first level with the first one. In the past it was also used- We are so like far down right now. Claustrophobia. The mine reaches a depth of 1,073 feet and extends over 178 miles. Since the 13th century, brine welling up to the surface had been collected and processed for its sodium chloride content, AKA table salt. Ooh, I got a lot. Super <laughs> salt. That's saltier than the ocean. Today, it's home to the Krakow Salt Works Museum. The tour shows visitors an underground lake, exhibits on the history of salt mining, numerous statues carved by miners out of rock salt, but the craziest thing to us was this underground chapel. Everything's made out of salt, even the chandeliers. Yeah, this is so uh, crazy. Oh, Sorry, 
Oh, it's racing. Hmm. Oh, it's bigger. It, it opens up. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh my god, they are actually hanging up there. Okay. Hey, this only takes 40 seconds. Oh my god, we are moving it fast. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Have a nice trip. <laughs> How's that shit coffee? It says stop ca cafe. It tells you after that first sip you want to stop. <laughs> Look at my little pinky going loud in the shot right now. Yeah, do it chill, dude. <laughs> Early one of 6 a.m. bus to Budapest. Six to eight hours. So far on our journey, Poland has felt like one of the safest countries we've been to in all of Europe, which was surprising. And while we can't just be 100% bullish on Poland's future without also considering potential drawbacks, the overall outlook is looking pretty solid, and it seems like its scope of influence in Europe is definitely expanding. Only time will tell if Poland is truly a powerhouse in the making and quietly becoming Europe's next superpower and big tourist destination. Bye. 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 Bye.